about life processes. So today I'm going to teach you about the eight, the eight life processes. So when you were little, you can remember in grade one and two, three. I'm just going to decorate the title. I just went to the corner a little bit. So when you were little in grade one, two, three, four, five, all these ages, all your teachers just used to ask you to categorize things based on if they are living or non-living. So we categorize them based on uh, some features that they had, like living things can move, non-living things cannot move. So just to recall, I used to categorize my living things such as human and trees, animals, and non-living things like the chair, the tables, all the things that could not move or could not breathe. So in this syllabus, we will categorize living things. For an organism to be classified as a living thing, they have to carry out these eight life processes that we will be talking about. So to make it easier to remember the eight life processes, there's a small acronym. It's actually a name. Call it Mrs. C. Gray. So each letter of this name corresponds to a particular feature that is being carried out if that organism is a living organism. So let's take it one by one. M. M stands for movement. All living things are capable of moving. If you take a tree for an example, a tree cannot hop from one place to another, but a tree will sway accordingly to the wind direction. It responds to stimuli. Its leaves close. Sometimes its roots grow towards water. All these are types of movement. And of course, humans, right now, if you're sitting in a chair, you probably grab something. You turned your pages here and there. That is the movement that you're showing. All of a sudden, you decide, I can't do this, and you give up and run away. Another movement. The second one, R. It stands for respire. Uh, there are two R's in Mrs. C. Gren, so... For the record, you can actually switch between these two because this is not an exact order. It's just for you to remember the eight life processes. I'm going to go with the first R. I'm going to label it as respiration or respire. Respiration is the process of breaking down glucose. So all these glucose molecules will react with oxygen and they give out carbon dioxide and water which means they produce energy. So this is a glucose molecule. I'll just label it here so that you don't get confused. i just color it up in a nice color. That's glucose. That is respiration, the breaking down of glucose to give out energy. All living organisms respire. Number three, responding to stimuli. When a football approaches your face, you tend to move away from the football. You don't stand there for the five minutes waiting. Okay, is this football going to hit me? No, you quickly move to the other place and avoid the football. The same way plants, for example, touch me not. Every time you touch it, it responds to the stimuli by curling, closing its leaves up. All living organisms respond to stimuli. And stimuli is a change in the external environment. We go to C. C is for control. Controlling all the internal conditions in your body. For example, temperature, water content. These are the, these are the most important functions that are controlled in your body. This also has another name. The correct name, homeostasis. Controlling all the internal conditions. So in some examples, I have seen this as Mrs. H. Gren instead of Mrs. C. Gren, but you can learn it either way, it's correct. So G. G stands for grow and develop. No? All the babies just tend to get bigger and bigger. They tend to grow from one area, from this baby little size, from one month old to 50, 60, 70 year old people. Same way all the trees start growing that way, they start growing 
from the baby plants from the seeds all the way to massive mango trees they grow and develop all plants this is the other r writing the other r here that i'm going to write based on reproduce all living organisms reproduce that means they give rise to offspring the next one e all living organisms excrete they send out the undigested waste materials out of their body because if they store the undigested waste material that is going to be very very toxic so for them to excrete they need nutrients taken up to their body so the last one is that all living organisms require nutrition so this is the easiest way to remember the eight life processes so I hope you enjoyed this video. So in the next one, I'm going to take you on a journey and teach you about the animal and the plant cell and all the functions of each and every organism, each and every organelle in an animal and a plant cell.